But let me introduce Joe while he's setting up. So I actually know Joe Kuchera. We are, we are alumni from Fordham Business School, so it's really exciting to bring him in here today. And it just happened that uh, he's an accomplished author and also has been working on, uh, on, on, on bringing assistance to the one laptop per child through the proceeds of his new book, uh, which he'll talk about. So, so Joe Kuchera, who's based in LA, is here today to uh, basically talk about how the uh, Hispanic culture and can, can thrive in the digital marketing era. And he'll talk about what we can do as Googlers as well as uh, people who are interested in that market and, and what, what are the tips, the five steps to success. Joe advises companies on how to best develop culturally customized content for social media, newsletters, and websites. So he has two books, including the first book, which is out today on Amazon, called Latino Link, Building Brands Online with Hispanic Communities. Joe's also a contributing author to blogs, newsletters, and places like the Fox News Latino uh, uh, station. So all of that is where you can find him. He's also a member of the IAB board in Mexico, and it's a member of the Hispanic Committee for the uh, that is the IAB in the U.S. So please welcome Joe as he's setting up. How are we doing? Good. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Rachel, thanks so much. So most Americans know three phrases in Spanish. Any guesses what those are? Hasta la vista. Well, una cerveza, por favor. Corona. Corona. After a few uh, cervezas. Well, <laughs> un taco, por favor. And then after a few tacos and cervezas. Donde esta el baño? So my presentation today, as Rachel indicated, is about my new book, which is uh, actually coming out in Spanish. But what I want to talk to you today about is about introducing a new word in Spanish uh, to marketers worldwide, and that's the word for success, or éxito. And it's actually a five-step or five-letter acronym for how to, to develop a successful digital marketing campaigns. I have to admit, um, before I walk you through the process, that actually my first experience with Spanish lang language acronyms was a, uh, unfortunately a total disaster. I was actually working at Time Warner, uh, working at CNN Money, and I moved to Mexico City to work at Grupo Expansión, uh, one of the leading media companies in Mexico. They have the, the largest business magazine, Expansión. And together with the team there, we started CNN Expansión. And in that first meeting on that first day, they started using the word CEP. And I thought to myself, what is a CEP? I had studied Spanish for years, but um, totally lost the meaning of the meeting. But CEP is a Seccion Especial de Publicidad, or Special Advertising Section. So unlike that experience, I'm here to actually explain what that, um, my five-letter acronym uh, means. We know the, five, the four Ps, um, place, price, product, and promotion. And it's been used for decades uh, for marketing planning about, you know, where are we going to sell our product? Uh, what's the price? How are we going to promote it? And uh, the retail channel. But today, we really, there are a lot of new factors that we all know about. You know, technology. Chief marketing officers actually spend more than, I'm uh, sorry, chief marketing officers, yes, spend more than chief technology officers on technology and big data. There's a need for innovation, coming up with new ideas. Uh, there's a need for community and content. And there's a need to really listen to our community and use that, that, uh, that research. And really, the benefits of a model break down a complicated process into simpler steps. And it makes things easier to remember and share and replicate. So let me walk you through the five-step process for exito, or the, it's the word for success in Spanish. So E is escucha su audiencia. Listen to your audience. What are they saying about your company, your brand, your competitors? X is experimento como usuario. Um, put yourself in the shoes of the user. <coughs> develop user profiles. We all know the importance of that. The third step is I, 
integrate your uh, communication channels. So how does social media and customer service, are they saying the same thing? T is transform your audience into a community using storytelling. And O is optimize. So these are all things we know, but just kind of put into a format that are easy to remember, for, uh, especially relevant for the Latin American markets, which, you know, as Rodrigo talked about, are expanding so quickly. So let me share a few stories from my book, um, and we'll walk you through uh, each one, a st one story for each step. So E, escucha sudencia, listen to your audience. We all know the importance of user-generated content. Uh, Time named all of you the person of the year in 2006. And because of you know, things like Google Plus and YouTube, that's fostered things like Occupy Wall Street, you know, and the revolution in the Middle East. And here we see some graffiti and actually in Tunisia thanking uh, Mark Zuckerberg for providing them with a platform for uh, organizing their revolution. Now, while that has a huge implication, obviously, on leadership of both governments and businesses, you know, I'm not here today to talk about Facebook or Egypt, but rather, you know, how can visual social networks change uh, marketers out there? So I'd like to share with you this story uh, of a case study from my forthcoming book. Uh, it's the story of 3M, uh, actually 3M in Mexico. 3M makes the post-it note, the square colored pieces of paper. And when they did a listening study about what people were saying about their products, they discovered that people weren't talking about the practical uh, elements of their product, but rather how to draw Marilyn Monroe's face in the office or draw Steve Jobs' face uh, on a window, or even play pranks on a friend and uh, cover their car with post-it notes, or maybe even put Pac-Man in the window. So the folks at 3M Mexico, after doing that listening study, said, why don't we just make, create a marketing campaign around what customers are already doing? So they actually created this virtual wall where you and I can create a profile and actually draw different designs using different colors. Here we see someone writing out the word for moda or, or fashion. And then actually print out a shopping list, put in your zip code, and then find out uh, where you can buy that or what's the nearest retailer. So in conclusion, really the, the benefits to learning that, uh, to listening that, that 3M showed here are you know, how an inspirational idea can come from the audience directly, you know, how it increased brand awareness, how what was once a commodity product kind of became differentiated through the marketing and communication, how it increased sales and drove traffic to the stores. But I think what's most interesting about this is how this idea started in Latin America and is now being replicated uh, in South America and Asia and how innovation can start in the emerging markets. Also very interesting how a paper product from the pre-computer world has become a pixel in the new world and kind of become more relevant in the interactive world. Step number two, X, experimenta como usuario a través de perfiles. So how can we put ourselves in the shoes of the user uh, using user profiles? So, this uh, chapter in our book uh, is inspired by this behavioral economist you see here is uh, Dan Ariely. He teaches at MIT and uh, Duke University, and he's the author of Predictably Irrational. And you see on his face there's a scar on the lower right side of his chin. And, and in his book he talks about when he was 18, he was in a severe, um, uh, his 80 percent of his skin was burned. He was in a gas explosion. And that really changed the direction of his life and set a, a course for him for his professional work. And while in the hospital, um, he, re he discovered and he his body was covered with bandages. And every day the nurses had to change his bandages, but they removed them very quickly because they didn't want to experience the patient's pain. From his perspective, uh, patients, it was much easier psychologically if, if the nurses remove the bandages slowly. So really what it showed was like, how can we get out of our own head and really think about the user's perspective, which 
we draw a parallel in the book of like how companies, we all want to hit our monthly and quarterly numbers, but at the end of the day, the customers just want their problems solved, which shows why it's so important to develop profiles. So when, when we're developing our marketing campaigns and social plans or marketing uh, media plans, how we can think about it according to uh, different profiles. So the case study in, our, in the book that we have here is, that exemplifies this step is, um, the step is Banamex. Banamex is uh, the division of Citibank in Mexico. And they really uh, successfully developed user profiles to understand what do low income consumers in Mexico and Latin America need for a banking product. Currently most people in that audience do not have a bank account. So they went to the Mexican government and they reduced the 20 pieces of information that were required of people down to eight. And they, when they developed their marketing program, and this is in Spanish here, but it's a, they developed a kind of a three-step marketing and word of mouth model for promoting their product and baked it right into the product development where when someone signs up using their phone, their phone number becomes the account number and they can invite the people that they have on their phone to join. And when that person signs up, each person that signs up gets 20 pesos deposited into their uh, Banamex transfer account. So obviously the word of mouth element was baked right into how the product was developed. So in conclusion, for step X or the second step here, you know, important, it's important to understand the perspective of customers, what problem they need solved, you know, document how they spend their time and we can use uh, kind of day in the life plans to develop our marketing plans, you know, and understand what motivates them. So for step three, uh, I integrate your communication channels. I want to share a story that happened to me while I was actually uh, writing the book. And it's, this chapter, I guess you could say, was inspired uh, uh, by, uh, I guess, your nemesis here at Google, uh, Bill Gates, how your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. <laughs> And of course, the best place to find those happy customers is on social media. So much like this woman, I was in the airport in Mexico City uh, waiting for a flight on Volaris, the, 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 the discount low-cost airline. I had printed my boarding pass in advance, went through security, was looking at the, the screen. Uh, it said, wait in area B. So I waited in area B. 20 minutes before the flight left, I went up to customer service and said, uh, you know, where's, what gate is the flight leading? It's leaving from, it still says area B. Uh, she said, you know, they announced it many times. They, we don't control the screen. You're gonna have to run to gate B. So I quick ran to gate B, uh, coffee in hand, coffee spilling out of my cup. And I was, uh, I got to the gate and they had just closed the door. And I said, can I get on the plane? I have my ticket here. I said, no, no, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to buy another ticket. I said, what? You're kidding me. It was still about 10 minutes before the flight was supposed to leave. A couple other guys showed up with a similar situation and we, we walked back to the customer service agent complaining. She said, no, no, you're gonna have to buy another ticket. I said, you're kidding. We went uh, down to the ticketing gate to complain and they explained it again and again and I, this, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna go ahead and buy another ticket instead of wasting my time. So of course, later that day, I, I complained on Twitter just to see what would happen. Would, the, would, the, would Volaris respond? Using the quote from Bill Gates uh, and using the airline's uh, uh, username on Twitter. And what did I get back? Exactly what I didn't want to hear. A, a message in Spanish, an automated response saying, download our app, uh, buy your tickets uh, on our application. Clearly, they weren't listening. So the next day I sent an email to them explaining my situation and got a call back saying we're so sorry, please give us a call. Called them back, but then got this email with my incorrect phone number saying we tried to call you, please give us a call. Social media, email and phone clearly, clearly saying different things. So as this Volaris story shows the benefits to integrating social systems, you know, with customer service, how can we develop better customer service, you know, learn how to improve as a company, have happier customers, uh, and improve word of mouth marketing.
the fourth step of the process is uh, T, transform your audience into communities. So this, is, this step's all about finding the needle in the haystack. So what's the content that it can attract our customers? How can we create content that has a magnetic force? And when we developed our process, my co-authors and I, we, we really thought about how do we learn lessons as children? And when we think about learning life's lessons, we, we do so through stories like Aesop's Fables, the Bible, movies, and stories like Winnie the Pooh. Interestingly enough, business really is no different. When we look at uh, the marketing and, I'm sorry, management guru, Peter Drucker, who was the author of over 40 books, uh, he was once asked by Fortune magazine, you know, Mr. Drucker, what are your favorite business books? And he said, actually, I don't read business books. I read uh, Shakespeare because it provides the most contextual lessons for, for being a leader. And when we analyze uh, Harvard Business School case studies, they're really no different. There are financial, there is financial information and, uh, you know, bullet points, but it's really about a story where the executives are surrounded by contextual information from the story. One great a company that's doing a great job with that is, is Baby Center. Um, any of you here parents? A few parents here. Perhaps some of you know um, Baby Center. Uh, moms and dads sign up, put in their email, the due date, and then receive weekly updates about what to expect when you're expecting or during the first few years of a child's life. But in addition to developing that database and that newsletter of content, they also provided a platform for moms to share their stories of where they are in their journey, not only in the US, but all across Latin America. So next I wanna show you two videos from, from Mexico that well, the first is a viral video, video that really exploded. And then the second video is a video that Pepsi's cookie division, Gamesa in Mexico, how their ad agency saw the possibility to transform that viral video into their own story and tap into the empathy that, that uh, some of the viewers felt for the characters in the first story. So let's take a look at those. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, No, we do No, we No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we No, we don't. No, we No, we don't. No, we 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 so the viral video brings out the empathy in us. Let's see what Gamesa did with that story. Ese emperador que llevas dentro. Emperador, rellenas de poder. How many of you speak Spanish? Okay, a few of you. Then, for those of you that did, uh, you understood the tagline, you know, full of power, and how these cookies can actually empower you, and how. And what's great about this is not only how they turned that first story into their own story but that that story actually continues today, how the, em the emperors and the Roman guards uh, come in and save the day, although today now they're, they're actually saving uh, beautiful women from being heckled by uh, construction workers in, in their commercials. So in conclusion, um, magnetic content attracts, uh, can attract your audience. Uh, ideas, stories can create ideas that stick in people's mind, uh, engaging stories and empower people to communicate with each other. 
So the last step in our process is optimize. Uh, we talk about A-B testing and other things, but I wanted to show you an example of how one retailer actually optimized the retail experience and brought social data into the store. Uh, here you see the, the retailer CNA clothing manufacturer actually put the number of likes that each product had on its uh, clothing hangers to show the, how popular each product was. And here's, a product, here's an example of how one supermarket chain used Twitter and developed an algorithm so that when you actually use the hashtag uh, in Spanish, quiero receta, I want a recipe, and then put all the ingredients that you have, you have in your refrigerator with a plus sign in between, it would send back to you a direct message about a recipe to use uh, with, that, with those things. So we know optimizing helps us react to customers in real time and optimizes products to better fit customers' needs and improves conversions. So in conclusion, uh, you know, listening to your audience, we heard the story of 3M and how the idea came from the audience. X, uh, Experimento Como Usuario, the importance of user profiles, uh, the story of Dan Ariely and his experience in the hospital and, and Banamex. So I, integrating your communication channels, uh, the story of Valaris and how their customer service and social were saying different things. Transforming your audience to a community, we saw the example of the Pepsi videos there and the, the guards. And O is optimize. So the research phase, planning, and launch and maintain. As I wrap up here, I just wanted to share with you about the story about you know, the next five to 10 years ahead and for the next generation of the internet. How can we use a model like this one to really innovate new products? Uh, David is originally from Bolivia, moved to the US to study computer programming at the University of North Carolina and volunteered to teach Hispanics about computer and internet uh, skills. And during the course of that time, through listening, he really understood their need for developing a new product for them and developed Pase La Voz, or Spread the Word. It's now the largest database for US Hispanics in the US for mobile, or an SMS database, where he sends uh, short form English lessons, uh, classified advertising, uh, and traffic alerts. Which is exactly why you know, we're supporting Rodrigo's organization, um, One Laptop Per Child, because we really see that the future of the internet is gonna require innovating new products for the billions of consumers who only have a mobile phone, who come from low income households. And so we ask you just to spread the word about the new book as it launches this summer. By the way, joining us on the phone today uh, virtually was, the, was uh, the office from Mexico City. And I just wanted to thank two of my co-authors for the book, Alonso Fernandez and Carla Behrman, who are joining us virtually from uh, Mexico City. And again, a book's coming out this June. So with that, thank you very much.